Hello and welcome to the Bike India channel. I am Azman and today we are riding the Husqvarna Swat Pillin 401. Now, as you recall, in 2020, Bajaj had brought down the Husqvarna Swat Pillin and the Wit Pillin 250. But they did not kick off like they were expected to kick off just because of many different reasons. Although now they've launched the Husqvarna Swat Pillin 401 and alongside that we have the Wit Pillin 250. So there's only going to be one model of each for the Indian market especially. Now, there are a few changes when compared to last time. So let me quickly take you through that. Now, the Husqvarna motorcycles have a really unique design language. Like looking at it right here, it's a really unique motorcycle. You see nothing like it and it's easily distinguishable anytime. But now, compared to the older models, this one right here has a slightly different design language. Now, if you spot the rear over here, it has an extended rear, much more than the last time. Last time, both models had the tail tidy, but this time, there's a slightly longer seat at the rear. If you look at the front, it's not just the headlight anymore. There's this cowl over here, and this also shares a lot of stuff with the KTM 390 Duke. Now, that includes the engine, the suspension, and the chassis. In this model, as you can see, this doesn't get the new aluminum subframe that we see in the 390 Duke. This gets a steel trellis frame at the rear as well. Now, this time around, the Swat Pillin, it gets a slightly straight handlebar compared to the last time, which was a slightly more raised handlebar unit. And what we can say in terms of that is, this was always meant to be a scrambler. But if you look at the entire ergonomics of the motorcycle, they are not very scrambler-like because you can't really stand up and ride. It doesn't have enough uh, ground clearance as well. So, this will just handle light off-road trails. And you know, your daily... Indian bad roads, yeah, for sure. And this also gets the same adjustable suspension from the 390 Duke. So that is a really good thing. That means you can adjust it and set it up to your liking. Now, Husqvarna's tagline with this model is Escape the Ordinary. And they expect their target audience to be customers who have progressive design taste. That's what they tell us. So, you know, this is going to appeal to a very few people who have this very unique taste and, you know, love for this kind of a design. So now in terms of ergonomics, that's another reason why this is a proper roadster. If you, if I swing my leg over, now as you can see, the foot pegs are slightly towards the rear. So as I'm sitting on it, I'm slightly, very slightly forward set. This is a very unique position again to be just on the road. And if I were to, if I were to, you know, show you that I could, if I were to stand up on the motorcycle, this is not a very natural position. I would need slightly higher bars and the foot pegs be slightly ahead. But yeah, overall, a good position for riding on the road and on the highway as well. The motor is in the same state of tune as the 390 Duke and also gets the same sprocketing. The power delivery of this motor is linear and there is a nice surge once it revs past the 7000 RPM mark. It gets up to triple digit speeds really quickly and I was able to cruise comfortably at 120 km per hour in 6th gear. There are a few vibrations creeping in at the handlebar and foot pegs once the bike revs past the 8000 RPM mark. As we had mentioned with the 390 Duke, this updated motor is also more tractable and can handle doing around 60 km per hour in 6th gear. The gearbox is slick and the clutch action is also really light. Now this new 399cc motor puts out 46 horsepower at 8500 RPM and a peak torque of 39 Nm at 6500 RPM just like the KTM. The power figures are on par, the sprocketing is on par. So that's again another reason why this is a street bike according to me and it's in a street setup as well. What I do really like was the light clutch and the quick shifter that works really, really well. I did have a few problems with it when I started out in the morning, but then all I had to do was uh, switch it off and switch it on again and it was working perfectly. Currently in India, what they've done is, as you can see, this has Pirelli Scorpion tires, which are slightly expensive tires. But they've managed to offer them to us at this price point because they have uh, compromised on the electronics. So now internationally, this does get two ride modes, which is street and uh, rain. But here we are set up in the street mode as standard and that's all you can use in this bike. Apart from them, it does get the usual supermoto mode in the ABS and it also gets traction control as well, which is switchable. So that's a really nice feature to have as well. In terms of handling, it does take slightly more effort to be put into a corner and flick over from one side to another if you compare it to the 390 Duke. It holds a line really well and is confidence inspiring once you get used to it. Over bad roads, the bike has a plush ride quality and with the adjustable suspension, riders can easily set it up to their liking. Braking duties are handled by a 320mm disc at the front and a 240mm disc at the rear. There is a sharp feel at the lever with good ABS calibration 
and this setup is able to bring the bike to a stop very easily. The bike has a curb weight of 171 kg which makes it light to maneuver around. With the unique design of the tank, I found it a little difficult to lock my knee on either side while cornering. I feel like taller riders will feel more natural as ride the bike while tackling the twisties. Now there are many customers that might want the Swart pillion but they might want it with alloy wheels because as you can see these spoke wheels have tubeless tires on them but they're running with tubes because they're not tubeless spoke wheels. So customers can buy this and later on they will get an option to attach alloy wheels to it if they want to. The Husqvarna Swart Pillion 401 is priced at rupees 2.92 lakh ex showroom which makes it around 20000 rupees cheaper than the Duke 390. Now you get the same suspension setup and the same motor as the 390 Duke. So because of that, this is a very capable motorcycle. That's a very capable motor. And that's this is a very nice suspension setup as well. It's obviously going to appeal to riders who want to take it a little more relaxed than the Duke 390. The Duke 390 is for the more aggressive ones out there. So yeah, overall a good motorcycle and a fun day as ride it. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Like, subscribe and follow the Bike India channel for more content like this.